If Margaret Atwood's life was a book, her love of reading would show up right there in Chapter 1. Our protagonist spent much of her early childhood in the Canadian bush. I was a very early reader because guess what? Nothing much else to do when it's raining in the woods. The remoteness and silence of the great outdoors gave Margaret's imagination space to run wild, so she began to tell stories. My brother and I were both early storytellers. He wrote quite copiously as a child, so I was his reader, and I thought, I can do this. Were your parents always encouraging of you? Did they see in you? No? Well, they didn't want me to be a writer. No sane parent would want that for their child. What my mother said famously was, well, if you're going to be a writer, you better learn to spell. <laughs> and I said, others will do that for me. And guess what? I was right. We have spell check, and we also have proofreaders. I love them. Though Margaret is now known for her best-selling dystopias, like The Handmaid's Tale, this is my first novel, Annie the Ant. Her earlier works were a bit more whimsical and at times swoonworthy. I did have the lunatic idea in high school that I was going to write romance, and that was what got paid the most. So I thought, oh, good, I will write these uh, romance stories that can't be hard. <laughs> <laughs> so were those your first stories, romance I, stories? I or? wasn't good at it. I could not um, channel the required style. What is the, the required, required style? style in those days necessitated a lot of asterisks at the important moments on the sofa. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. You knew then that you wanted to write. I was intending to run off to France, smoke gitan, drink absinthe, live in a garret, get TB, and write masterpieces, as one always assumes. And did you do that? No, <laughs> I didn't. I went to Harvard. Margaret would go on to write more than 50 books, have a bestseller turned into a hit TV show, and win the prestigious Booker Prize twice. And now at 83, she's coming out with a brand new book called Old Babes in the Wood, a collection of 15 short stories, book ended by tales about Tig and Nell, a married couple inspired by Margaret and her longtime love, Graham Gibson, who passed away four years ago. They were together for nearly 50 years. Was this helpful in writing it, therapeutic to you at all? As everybody knows who has gone through this experience, it comes in waves. Mm. There aren't these stages that lead inevitably to a point where you're not thinking about them at all. Life goes on, people get older, and some of them die. Your idea of what old is changes radically, so when I was in... High school, I wrote a story about this really, really, really old woman who was past all hope. She was 40. <laughs> <laughs> that subtle yet sharp wit and humor can be found through all of Babes. The book is billed as fiction, but many of the stories are a nod to real people and places in Margaret's life. She steadfastly claimed she has no desire to write a memoir, but today, good news for her biggest fans. I'm writing a memoir. You are writing a memoir? At this very moment. Wow. You didn't think you would ever write a memoir. Is that true? Or was well, that... that's the kind of thing you say in your youth. You know, you say that when you're maybe 70. <laughs> <laughs> so as you're writing your memoir now, how is it different than everything else that you've previously worked on? You can't just make stuff up. <laughs> Wow. She's writing about her life now? She's writing about her life. Wow. She's writing a memoir. She's always said it was something she would never do. Huh. In this new book, there are characters that resemble her sister, mm -hmm. her late partner. Um, but this is a straightforward memoir, and I know many wow. fans are going to be very interested. That was a big exclusive, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Well, I'm wow. for, for literary fans, it's yeah. something we're quite yes. excited what about. What a character. She is. Yeah. She's hilarious. I would have loved to have read her memoir if she'd gone to France to smoke and drink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> by the way, Absinthe, by the way. she's Absinthe. hilarious and brilliant, and yeah. she could have been anything. She's she said yeah. her parents wanted her to be a biologist, and I said, well, could you have? And she said, yes. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. Old Babes in the Wood comes out tomorrow. By the way, can we just thank the Thomas Fisher Rare Book Library at the University of Toronto for hosting place. us. By the way, UT, mm -hmm. I went to UT Texas, <laughs> but UT Toronto <laughs> is where Margaret oh. went to undergrad. Oh, cool. So it was very cool to be cool. back cool. there cool. with her. Yeah. What a gorgeous uh, backdrop. They, yeah, they nice. very rarely let people film there, but of course, yeah. when the queen of <laughs> uh, Canadian 
Canadian literature comes, yeah, yeah. they yeah. roll out yeah. the red I was to say, and Margaret Atwood was yeah. there, too. Yeah. <laughs> You're our queen. Uh, okay. I, I'm Jenna. American. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.